What's up guys? It's your boy David from Sunward Hobbies and today we've got a real panty dropper for you. It is Bad Boy by Carolina Herrera. This is a men's eau de parfum with a very spicy, very strong projection and no, we're not reviewing this. What we're actually reviewing is Kotari's debut entry into the scale model market. It is their 132nd scale Supermarine Spitfire Mark 1A mid version. Kotari is a new company that was formed out of the ashes of Wing Not Wings. So we'll take a quick look inside, take a peek and see how it measures up to that very high standard. And here she is, the most beautiful plane ever made. For comparison's sake, the Spitfire is like the hot girl in high school that every boy wanted, and the Hurricane was her less attractive sister, but still very loyal. Anyway, uh, that being said, as I mentioned before, Kotari, a company formed from former Wingnut Wings employees who got while they're getting was good. And you can immediately see right from the box art the influence from Wingnut. They use the same uh, oil paint canvas style box art. Even the sides of the box, very reminiscent as well. As you can already see, there's going to be three marking options in here. And that out of the way, let's take a look inside. So we've got uh, a few sprues here not too crazy. And our instructions and decals. We'll get to those a little later. And I forgot scissors, so I will be right back. All right, I'm back and the bags are now open so we can take a quick look. First sprue here, the clear sprue with all our canopy parts on it and you have the option of a three-piece canopy so that you can position it open as well as a one-piece if you want the canopy all closed up plus uh, a few landing lights here. Next sprue. This houses the fuselage halves, the elevators, the covering for the fuel tank, as well as the cockpit floor, the engine cowlings, a wing spar, and the top section of the center fuselage, which by the way has positive rivets. In fact, the whole thing has positive rivets. That's very nice. This sprue here has got both halves of the wing, 
that beautiful elliptical wing that is instantly recognizable with a Spitfire. It's got some nice wheel well detail. And if I could bring this to your attention, Mark 1 slash 2. So that basically reveals that Kotare has plans to release a Mark II in the future. In fact, they're likely going to make a Mark V as well. So that's encouraging news. The sprue here, we've got some exterior details. You've got a little um, engine air intake here, the three blade propeller, strangely they made the exhaust pipes in halves. I don't really see the need for that, but okay. Uh, flare shoots. Tires with the weighted effect to them. And they even got the Dunlop emboss on them. And another famous feature of the Spitfire, the radiator fairing on the early marks. The radiator here was rectangular shaped and on the other end of the wing where the oil cooler was, that was a, a thinner fairing, like about that size. But that was changed in later marks and they both ends looked like this. Anyway, uh, more landing gear, landing gear doors. The cockpit opening door, the armor plate for the seat, and the headrest. Yes, very nice. And the last sprue is mainly interior details. You've got both side walls of the cockpit and pretty much everything is already molded onto it so it looks like there's very little to add. And they've already got the oxygen tanks on there, the, the throttle. This here looks like the um, firewall to the engine from the inside. And you've got the seat with the option of an already molded in seat belt or not. The instrument panel with uh, all the details molded in there. as well as the early style hydraulic landing gear lever. And there's that oil cooler fairing I was mentioning earlier. Rudder pedals, the top half of the engine cowling, and uh, another propeller here. Yeah, that, that first propeller is just a tiny bit longer in the blades. So that's that. Looks good, Kotari.
I will save the instruction booklet for last. But we'll do the decals next. So this is for three different marking options, all RAF, one that's technically New Zealand. Of course, Kotari had to add that in. And the print quality looks very good. And the, uh, I guess you'd call it the Silver is very tight to the decal. Yeah, looks good. And here's our instructions. It feels pretty thick, so I'll try to go through this fairly quickly. Color callouts, exact same as Wingnut, they call out Tamiya, Humbrol, and the Federal Standard, or British Standard, wherever you're from. And the parts map over here. Once again, a Wingnut Wings trademark uh, with photo references. And they color highlight the part that you are currently working on to help alleviate any confusion. So, like always, you start in the cockpit. You build up the floor, the instrument panel, the seat. And being a RAF fighter, the interior was in a light gray green. Although most Spitfires behind the seat were just left bare metal. Then you attach the side walls. Place it all in the fuselage, and you close it up. And if I might add, I think they missed an opportunity to give you a fully detailed engine that you could display in the kit. They're probably going to make an aftermarket one so they can squeeze some more money out of you, but I believe if they really wanted to stand out from other Spitfires, they should have included those details. Anyway, the fuselage have to go together, then the elevator, then you move on to the landing gear bay. I see that um, each gun is on one sprue and I believe they were already hollowed out for you. Next is the wing and then the radiator and oil cooler and you attach the wing to the fuselage attach the landing gear, glue together those exhaust halves, which again, uh, well actually now that I look at this reference photo, there did appear to be a, a seam there. Okay Kotari, you got me.
and the last assembly page you place the canopy on and attach some rigging from the antenna wire to the tail fin. Then on here you've got your stencil decals. That's basically the the walk here, don't walk there, do this, don't do that, lead rain on aircraft. And then your marking options. First one is that, uh, in my opinion, ugly half white, half black underside, which uh, the RAF used very early in the war for aircraft identification. But it must not have done them much good as they got rid of it fairly quickly. But on top, you have your traditional RAF dark earth and dark green. And then uh, the next scheme, the more traditional with the sky green underneath. And the last marking option, this probably looks familiar to you as the it's the exact same one that Tamiya uses for their Spitfire kit. And uh, the last few pages look to be some more reference photos. And uh, just like with Wingnut, they give a shout out to their designers because they are very proud of their work. And uh, quite honestly, they should be. In conclusion, this is a very nice kit. Very reminiscent of Wingnut Wings with its great engineering and thorough research. That being said, however, it is yet another Spitfire. And in my opinion, it doesn't really blow away other offerings from Tamiya or Edward. But despite that, I think it will satisfy any Spitfire fan. And you have just about everything you need in there to make the model look like the real subject. Muy bonita. So feel free to pick up one for yourself today at Sunward Hobbies in store or online. Thanks for watching, like, comment, subscribe, and until the next one, adios.